Hello everyone, I'm Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer Information Systems at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellyn, Illinois, and this video is going to take a look at x86 assembly language as it relates to basically chapters 4 and 5 in the Irvine textbook that we use here at the college, and we're going to take a look at an example problem. So what is that problem? It's something similar to something I would give at the, you know, at the homework level, at the assignment level. So in this case, I want to say, let's display the first nine integer powers of two. So two to the zeroth power is one, and Uji's basically doubling every time, right? One, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, so forth and so on, all the way up to 256. So some of the rules, I hate these rules, but we don't know a lot of this stuff yet, and some of the times, just to kind of get used to doing things, especially with that pointer video, getting used to you, you know, getting used to using things we don't normally use at that low level, it's important so that when we do things, you know, later on in the term, everything will work out for us. So rules. No hard coding any of the output, because we know the values. We could just print out. We could just print a string out, right? We could do that in one line or two lines of assembly language code. We're not going to do that. So we, and then also we could just use a register, but let's use a variable just for the sake of trying it out. Uh, for to hold the value as we're duplicating and, and modifying and uh, and doubling everything up. And then number three, since this is actually surprisingly a chapter seven problem, how do I multiply? How do I divide something? We'll you know we'll basically just you know double each you know doubling is multiplying by two. So we'll see that we can do this without using the multiplication. So first step for something like this, as much as everyone loves to just jump into code. My high, high, high recommendation here is take this, especially if it comes in as a word problem and I don't give you a C++ code to start with, is to write that code. So here is a sample of one way to do it. And you could use a for loop. You could use different style, styles of loop. And we're going to see for loops and while loops and how do we translate them into assembly language later on in the term. But for now, I can see that because I'm going to be doing something nine times, it'd be nice to oops set up. Sorry about that. It'd be it'd be nice to set up basically a do while loop because when this do while loop plays right into this loop instruction that is part of the lecture notes of uh, the you know the stuff that you see here on or on Blackboard. So here is something that works. Start with an x value of one and then basically set my countdown my loop counter to nine. Print out the value of x, so print the 1, then print a space, double it, x equals x plus x. You know, x equals 1 plus 1, so x becomes 2, and then immediately decrement ECX and check to see if it's 0. And if it's not, so it'll do this 9 times over, it'll go ahead and run around and then print out the 2, print a space, double the 2 into 4, and, and so forth and so on. Print out the 4, print out the 8, 16, 32, 64. 128, 256, and then ECX will finally reduce down to zero. I'll fall through the loop and the program will, will finish. And that's exactly what I was trying to do. I'm trying to display those values in a non hard coded manner. So, with that said, let's take a look at how to go about doing that. Okay, so it's just simple if we just use an integer value for this. That's what I have. So, int uh, signed double word one. That goes in the data segment. And so, you know, and I do, let me see if I can uh, pull up, let me see if I can do this real quick. Let me get this, uh, this over here, drag this over, boom, and there I am, all my fun stuff here. Here we go. So this is what I'm trying to do, right? Let me see if I can zoom in on this a little bit, make this bigger, move this over. There we go. So that's what we're trying to do. So there's my, there's my data segment, there's my global variable. So now in code. So now you see int ECX. I made I, I set this up because anytime I use the loop instruction in assembly language, I have to use the ECX register. So I'm trying to set this up in a way that makes it easy for me, easier for you to understand as well. So if I take the ECX register and I move a nine in there, that at least gets things going. And down here I see that while that 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 uh, pre-increment, I'm sorry, pre-decrement of the ECX register and testing for zero. That's exactly what the loop operation does. Whenever I hit a loop, it immediately decrements ECX first and then just checks to see if it's zero. And if it's not zero, it loops around to wherever that label is. And I always like to use again, at least to start out. Sorry about that, you know. 
So I have, and that's the basic loop structure. Set up your ECX, loop again, come back around. And just to show it's working, if I wanted to, I could move whatever's in ECX into EAX, call write, uh, write int, and call carriage return line feed, and run this program, and you will see it'll print down the value, 9876543321 which you know it never prints the zero because when it is a zero and it decrements to zero it immediately kicks out of the loop so we'll see from one to nine it is counting down it does a nine it does this loop nine times over so okay so I can get rid of this I'm gonna want this right int because that is coincidentally enough the first line of code here right that's oops whoa, where did that go so coincidentally enough right so the first thing I want to do here is is C out X, but I'm like, oh, I want to write int, but I have to have the EAX register. That's just part of chapter five. I have to know that I have to move into the EAX register, whatever is that variable, so I can do the write int. So this is two lines of code for my C out of X. And then you can see here it'll print, now it'll print the one nine times over because all I'm doing each time through is moving a one into the register, calling write int, and then doing a carriage return line feed. Okay, so instead of the carriage return line feed, let's do the, uh, let's do the uh, line of code for just printing out a space. Move al comma space, and then call write character. So that is this, the same here as cout space and now you can see move things over there's my plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one and don't mind the plus you know right deck is how you do unsigned right int is how you do signed values and we're going to be using signed values maybe not today right now but we will be using it so that plus is okay you don't have to worry about anything like that so the program won't be exactly the same in C++ as it is in assembly but the gist of it is there so now the final step here, I want to double whatever x is. So you're like, oh, that's easy. I'll just add x to x, add x comma x, right? And you could try that, and you will fail miserably. Where's my error list? There's my invert, and it says instruction, invalid instruction operands. Because this goes way back to our first introduction to the, the add statement, the move statement, or anything that requires this that we can't use two register we can't use two variables even though they're the same variable we can't use two of them in the same line of code because because of the way the the buses are set up on our system our cpu communicates to all the other parts of our computer and in this case the ram that we can only use one at one time we can only access one piece of ram one variable so it doesn't it can't it just can't go ahead and go and and, and do two at the same time so we have to do two lines of code at the very least, maybe even more, let's see. So I have to, instead of just doing the add outright, I have to move the value into somewhere, and I want to make sure that I do not blow out ECX, because I need that, because if I change ECX here, it's going to change the loop counter. So ECX is out of the equation here. We can't go ahead and do anything with that. So at least in this case, anything else is fair game. And notice, with these lines of code here, I'm doing, I'm using EAX, I'm doing whatever, I'm done. I can, I can overwrite and do whatever I want and continue on because I'm done using it now. And the same here, I blow out the, the AL portion of it to do what I need to do. Okay, I'm done. And so I can go ahead and just move EAX into X. And now I can, oh boy, here's the fun part. Like now I can add EAX to EAX. So it is a three-liner to make this work. It might be a two-liner, but off the top of my head, it is not coming to me if it is. And what that, that, is the, that is the addition part where I can take myself and add to myself. And that's perfectly allowed because I'm always allowed to have one or two registers as part of an operation. It's just the RAM is the, the limiting reagent on that. But that doesn't change X. So right now if I, if I go ahead and run the program another time, you see that it still prints out 11111 even though we're doubling it here because the register is holding the doubled value and not the variable itself. So the final step has to go in to move EAX over into the X register. So let me erase that or get rid of that and then start over. And then lo and behold, what do you know? As I go ahead and double X and move it in every single time, double it, double it, double it, there we go. There's my plus one. There's 2, 4, 8, 16, all the way up to 256. 
So for these problems that you see for you know this week's worth of homework assignments, the problems you see are very similar to this. It gets a little more complicated because some of the problems use arrays, and so you need to use you have to think in a way of pointers and how many bytes do I have to move. But that's the basic concept. Use a loop structure, use an array, use a variable, use your registers to solve the specific problem. And as always, anyone out there, send me an email if you're my student. Send me a message through YouTube if you have any questions about anything I've done. It's very possible I've said the wrong thing or whatever because this is my new life as a video producer here. I'm used to talking in a classroom setting. I'm getting used to this, so I'm trying to do my best. If there's anything you can do to help me make this a better experience I'm outside of learning how to become a film producer, I'd love to hear it. And uh, thanks again for watching this video. We'll see you next time.